Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's weekly video, I'm going to talk about nitrates. If you follow me and you saw last week's video, it was about phosphates. A different, a different approach in reference to the previous videos that I have done when it comes to phosphates and nitrates. But then today, I used more or less the same pattern of last week when it was phosphates. And I'm basically going to do the same thing this week, but I'm going to talk about nitrates. Uh, when ni how nitrates affect your uh, reef tank, your reef aquarium. Uh, there's good things about it, and there's bad things about it if it's at different levels. So I hope you find it interesting, you learn something from this video, and let's take a deep dive into it. Hold on. Okay, so here we are targeting the new acquisitions that I got from Worldwide Corals. So you have on the left, I have a war coral. I purchased that this past Saturday. Uh, it was my birthday, as a matter of fact. And uh, now that war coral is very unique because either you have the war corals. I mean, if, if you look at other videos and you research them, you'll notice that they're either like uh, red, red, or green. But this one has a combination of these colors. And uh, it's natural. It's not, uh, you know, that they were like morph into red and green or none of that. And then on the right hand side, I went ahead and for the first time, I got a Polythoa grandis. Now it's starting to open. In other words, it's going through the acclimation process. So uh, as I talk now about nitrates, I'm going to go ahead and leave it focused at the actual two new acquisitions that I got this last Saturday. So let's get into it. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to talk about mainly, as I did on the intro, is how does nitrates affect your reef aquariums. So the first thing that I um, researched and also from my past uh, experiences, uh, nitrates like phosphates are considered nutrients in your reef for corals to thrive, but at an allowable target level. And when I'm talking about an allowable target level, remember what I always say on previous videos, this is the uh, targeted, uh, the uh, baseline. So when it comes to nitrates, uh, it should be no less than 0 0.025 and between 5 and 10 ppms. Now, uh, when it comes to 5 and 10, uh, I would say like in a mixed reef like this one is, 10 ppms is an allowable target range. Higher than that, well, you know, you're going to have issues with I'm going to, which I'm going to go into it now as we go and take a deeper dive into this topic. But uh, 0. 0.025 would, I would say, the minimal, the minimal amount of traceable amount of nitrates that you should have. Now, I mentioned this when I did last week the video on phosphates, and also I'm going to say more or less the same thing on this video. The old school was that you had to have, have a quote-unquote sterile tank. No traces of phosphates, no traces of nutrients but that has been proven wrong. So you do have half, you have to have an amount, a detectable amount of phosphates and nitrates, knowing that when you do the actual test, these uh, elements have already been consumed by corals. But no matter if they've been consumed, uh, you shouldn't get like a zero reading. If you get a zero reading, well, it's zero because they've already consumed it, but no matter if they consume nitrates and like phosphates, when you do a test, you should have a traceable amount of nitrates, just like phosphates. Now, uh, too high of NO3, which is uh, the chemistry value when it comes to nitrates, too high NO3 will cause SPS corals, especially aquos, to brown out. Now, this is due to the rapid growth of the symbiotic algae within coral tissues known as zooxanthellae, which is a brownish color in nature. So, 
what happens is that if your nitrates are too high, it accelerates this symbiotic algae. And then what will cause is that the corals will actually lose their natural coloration pigmentations, and then they'll become brownish. That's when you have too high of a NO3. But this really, um, this uh, thing that I just said, is really targeting to the SPS, especially the acros. If you have a higher level of NO3s, nothing will happen when it comes um, to, let's say, like LPS, um, soft corals, mushrooms, and so on. This that I just mentioned is really targeted when it comes to SPS, especially the acros. Now, having high nitrates, in other words, the imported nutrients should be balanced out with the output of nutrients in order to have a balanced and a stable water chemistry in your reef. So what I'm saying here is that, of course, nutrients is actually uh, food for your corals, just like phosphates are. But you must uh, find a balance, a stability. So like when you're importing nutrients and phosphates, but today we're talking about nutrients, like, well, of course, of nitrates. When you're importing this, you should have the capability of exporting more or less the same amount of these nutrients. Why? Because if you don't, then that's when you get the, the higher values of NO3, of uh, nutrients. Now, how can you export? Well, of course, water changes and also um, protein skimming. So when you're skimming out um, with your protein skimmer, in reference to finding that sweet spot, you might only need to put uh, your protein skimmer for a certain amount of time. Uh, and yet, in other issues or in other situations, you might have to have it on 24-7, which is what I'm doing now as, uh, as we speak. So you have to find an export method that will comply or be sufficient when we're talking about the import of nutrients. And of course, like I mentioned right now, reiterating water changes and protein skimming. Now, high nitrates can also be caused by overfeeding your fish, especially, and this is very important, especially pellet foods. Way back, I shot a, a video where I would talk of how can you regulate and control your NO3 and PO4 uh, by using a certain amount or a type of food. Like for instance, using uh, frozen foods like mysis shrimp, which is what I feed these fish and also, of course, the corals benefit from it, and also pellet foods. But the pellet foods are known to have a higher concentration of phosphates and also of nitrates. So if you're, you know, upon testing, if you see that you have a higher uh, allowable amount of nitrates, then my recommendation is to either bring down the feeding of pellet foods, if you're feeding pellet foods, or simply just drop it. Just completely stop the pellet foods until you reach an allowable range of uh, nitrates, like I mentioned before, which would be the 0 0.025 uh, and also up to 5 or 10 ppms. So right now, as we speak, uh, I have stopped the pellet foods. And my range usually on this mixed reef, when I check my uh, nitrates, with the Salifer test kits, which is what I use, it's within, I, I'd say it's within uh, five and eight PPNs, which is great. It's a, a great amount. Low nitrates can help to keep coral uh, coloration, especially, again, targeting the SPS coral. But always remember that you should have a traceable amount of NO3 in your reef aquarium to create what I was mentioning before, stability in your reef tank. Now, before I close the uh, video, I go ahead, I went ahead and I did a note in reference to what I have just talked about. And this is what I came up with. Although 
nitrates, of course, NO3, can cause the browning of SPS corals if found to be too high. It can be beneficial and a source of nutrients for all corals if at, again, the allowable target level. Well, I hope you found the video interesting, educational, and funny, and you learned something from it. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thanks for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.